Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Fire Emblem Fates Quickies. Today we're going to be doing Chapter 21, The Eternal Stairway. Um, this map, I already predicted, it was going to be an extremely boring clear for us to do. The main strategy that we're going to be employing is just the same thing that we did on Chapter 19, which is buffing Xander up to High Heaven and just sending him into the enemies. These guys have stuff like Sa Savage Blow, but Xander is, like, he's actually Superman at this point. He, he can't take damage if he's paired up with Corrin. He's even from these like 45 enemies, uh, 45 damage, 44 damage guys. He's just not going to take damage. So he's going to be at one HP for most of the map, but he's not going to die. And one HP is not none HP. That's my new catchphrase that I just invented. Um, we also have Percy on this map because he's like the only other unit that we can deploy aside from uh, if we reclass Camilla, which is kind of defeating the purpose of trying to get her to trample. Um, that can hit anywhere close to that threshold. We have a Kumagera backpack on him. If we wanted a bit more of an effective backpack, we could. Uh, promote somebody into general and then give him that backpack so for example we could take Effie or Benny and promote them into general but uh, I don't want to spend another 2,000 gold on a uh, master seal on a unit that I'm not going to be using aside from just as a backpack and Kumagira gives four strength and four defense which is just fine by me um, right now he still does take damage from uh, basically all the enemies uh, he does double them which is nice he doesn't kill them because his strength is unfortunately a bit low uh, uh, and we do have Xander here, and Xander has Rally Defense, which is what we're going to be relying on to make sure that uh, uh, Percy actually does get his kills. And both of these units, uh, something that's important to note is that both of our guys have Lunge. So if you're like trapped in the middle of units, so you can you can uh, turn by turn Lunge up and like get yourself out of the pickle, which is which makes your life a little bit easier when you're prepping. Um, now, the real meat and, meat and potatoes of this chapter is actually going to be... Let me just turn on animations. Other animations off. I'm not going to do anything. So, the real meat and potatoes is that I asked for a bunch of questions from you guys. And I have a Q&A pull pulled up on my other monitor here. And I'm going to be going from bottom up. So, I have it set to newest first. So, the ones at the bottom are the oldest ones. So, I'm going to be going from them all the way to the top. And then I'm going to be answering as many questions as I can. Uh, yeah, I think that's all I had. Let's get this party started. Go ahead and pair up Corn and Xander. At this point, Xander has an effective 42 from his defense, 44 from his personal because the enemies are at full HP, and, and um, uh, 46 from Corrin's personal. So he has 46 defense, which means that nobody on this map can deal any damage to him. Not only that, he's going to get level ups, which probably at least one of them is going to include defense, so that's good to know. Uh, first thing that we're going to do is that... So what you need to remember for this Percy right here is that he... If you rally him up, he doesn't take damage from anybody except for uh, golems that have massive rocks, which do more damage, uh, and the boss. So if we just stay out of this range, uh, rock, regular rock, uh, regular rock, yeah, if we just stay out of this range, then we can just fish for defense level ups on Percy, which is actually rather likely. Wyvern Lord Camilla Percy has a 65% defense uh, growth, so we should be just fine. Um, 62% skill. Hmm, interesting. Okay. Um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to... Uh, we want to try to move Percy first because uh, then you can make sure that Xander's always there to move over and rally for him. I'm going to do... These guys also have breaker skills, which is important to keep in mind. Uh, just, just something to keep in mind. Uh, interesting. I do have this uh, Arthur's Axe here, which is... Uh, it's a... Cat my cast item, so I'm just going to refrain from using it as much as possible. But it's just here, just in case. All right, uh, let's get started on the Q and A's. So I've got one from Noish Fanboy here. That we've got three questions here. The first one is, do you know anything about the Birthright meta? I'm trying to get into it. Uh, the answer to that is absolutely not. I have I I don't play Birthright. I if you if you don't know yet, which you probably do because this guy's also hanging out in my Discord. Um, I I'm I'm like. Probably the number one birthright hater in this universe. I uh, I just don't fuck with the the game at all. Um. Uh, the if you want some uh, information on the birthright meta, I think you would be better off going to like a Fire Emblem Discord and asking for help because I'm I don't think I'm as reliable of a um, guide to birthright as I am with Conquest or Revelation. Uh, one thing I can say about birthright meta that I'm confident about is that you should uh, is that Reyna is the fucking goat. Okay. Uh, let's just rally. Defense, and then 
Uh, question number two, opinion on the Hoshido classes. Were they good or were they unnecessary? Uh, I think the Hoshido classes do add quite a bit of flavor to this game. Uh, they make it a lot more unique because, um, well, okay, to be fair, there's some classes that you can't really ask whether they're unnecessary because like, it's like samurai into sword mastering shit. And those are like <laughs> mainstays of the Fire Emblem series. So, um, But uh, as for like stuff like Oni Savage, stuff like that, I think it's quite cool. I do think that the distribu distribution is really fucking stupid, but you know, we can't really do too much about that uh, as players. Okay, um, question number three is favorite Pokemon generation. He says, mine is Generation 7. I do respect the Gen 7 pick, but uh, I think my favorite generation is Generation 6. More specifically, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, because those were the games... Those were the first Pokemon games that I played. And the first Pokemon game you play and complete always has a special place in your heart, I think. Uh, let's, let's move. As long as we stay out of this death range, we are completely fine. Um... Now, the reinforcements that spawn, they have Void Curse, so you can't get EXP off them. They also have Wary Fighter, but also that's, like, really not that much of an issue. Do we have any, like, healing items in the convoy? Ah, we don't. That's unfortunate. Um... Hold up. I'm just trying to see if I could maybe do some cheeky bullshit. Um... Okay, 22... 22 plus 17 is 39. Okay, yeah. <laughs> it's just not worth trying. Okay. Um, but yeah, no. Uh, Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire are my favorite. I just think that it's like... It, it's. I think it's probably my favorite remake in just gaming history. Uh, it's it's faithful to the base material, but also it adapts it in a way that's just so wonderful to see. I, 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 have, a lot of, I have a lot of love and respect for those games. Uh, let's go ahead and get rid of these ranges because they're going to confuse me. Okay, moving on. We have some questions from Barner Talik here. Uh, number one, favorite non-FE game? Um, favorite game is a really fucking loaded question. Uh, but uh, I will say that one of my favorite games is... Um, like, some of my favorite... I'm a big, like, uh, Super Nintendo game enjoyer. Uh, I would say that, you know, like, Mega Man X, Super Mario World... Um, if you want something a bit more recent, Breath of the Wild is probably one of my favorite games of re uh, like a as of late. These guys all have Axe Breaker? What assholes. Uh, question number two here, we have any suggestions for someone wanting to start making videos? Uh, I, I don't know how reliable of a guide I am for that, but what I can say is just fucking do it. Um, my first videos, if you go on this channel, you can see my first videos are actually ass. They're so bad. The production quality is horrible. The mic quality is horrible. There's there's a watermark over a bunch of the videos. There's there's like cuts between parts, which is nice, but they're inconsistent. And the the transitions that I use are are you serious, man? This guy's missing 84s like it's nobody's business. Um, they're like inconsistent and like all over the place, which is uh, it's it's just not good. But you know, I, I did it because I wanted to do it. And you can the it's it's better to try than not try, in my opinion. So I'd say just toss yourself into the deep end but you know also i would say i would definitely say uh take everything i say with a grain of salt defense level up number one let's go um and number three how did i get started playing fire emblem well as with a lot of people well i'll just start off i'll try to tell a story here i guess so when when lag was i uh, i don't know how old i was maybe like uh not like seven but i think i was like 11 to 12 i had a 3ds that i, I fucking adored my 3ds to death it was Great, great handheld system. Um, I had, uh, I, I, I don't know how I got it, but I got Super Smash Brothers for the 3DS, and I played the shit out of that game on stuff, on like road trips and stuff. Um, still, still, I think one of the best games on the 3DS, even just because of the Smash Run mode, which they never brought back for some stupid reason. Um, and yeah, no, I, I was, I played, a, I played Ike because I was like, oh, this guy seems kind of cool, and. Uh, I was like, yeah, no, uh, I, I guess that's just where it started. <laughs> uh, and when I when I started playing Ultimate, I was like, I, I kind of want to see what these what, what the base material for these guys is. And you know, I, I saw it, and I and I now I'm a certified Fire Emblem addict. So, um, depending on how you see that, it could be either a good thing or a bad thing. Uh, moving on, we have Der, Der Brian asking, gameplay wise, what's your favorite unit on each of Fates' roots and why? Ah, uh, this is a great question. I think, okay, let's start off with Birthright. I think my favorite unit on Birthright is either, uh, it's either Reyna or Azama. 
Uh, Reyna because she's just really strong. Azama because um, he was a bit of a surprise to me when I first used him and I was like, man, this unit's fucking based. And if you want to use a cool unit, I would highly recommend Azama in Birthright because he, he put him into Great Master, he just does the thing that you want him to do. Uh, when it comes to Conquest, uh, this is a really, really loaded question. Um, I think... Uh, Honestly, it's not parry, despite what a lot of you might think, and that's because the reason the reason that I like uh, plug parry so much is because not necessarily because I I, I, I think that she's like the best tuner uh, because I like using her way more than anybody else, but it's more because I think that she's been some like I don't know about criminally, but she has been underrated by the community for I would say too long, so I've just been trying to get some. Uh, so I've, I've been embarking on this uh, one-man crusade to try to get this shit figured out, to try to make people understand that parry is a very viable unit. Um, when coming, going over, uh, so wait, I didn't actually even say what my favorite unit in uh, Conquest was. I would say it's either like, uh, I'd say it's either Leo or Kaze. Leo or Kaze, I think is, uh, those, it's one of those two. If, and if I, if you force me to pick one, uh, I would say Kaze, honestly, because it's just fun, like, running around, using either effective damage or just really good stats, and and it's really easy to get him a good wife in Conquest. It's just a good time. Second defense level up. I think he now, I think he's getting to the point, I think he now can technically use the Arthur's Axe and not take any damage from these guys and not require seal defense, but I'm still going to go ahead and use it. Oh, by the way, the reason that, that um, Percy has an Iron Axe is because... Um, I had some Iron Axes chilling around, and I realized that, you know, Iron Axes kind of suck, but Percy has a lot of a void, so you can at least alleviate one of the issues that the Iron Weapons have, which is that they don't give you any crit void um, on Percy. And also, I really needed him to deal damage, so I just figured that it would be a good play. And, yeah. Uh, Kamehame Hayes asks, Favorite Conquest unit? Like I said, it's uh, Kaze. Uh, dumbest build I have ever used in Conquest. Oh, this is a good one. I think the stupidest shit I've ever done in Conquest is Oni Chieftain Elise. Uh, and the whole reason I did that was once I just looked, I was just like, how low could your skill stat get in Conquest? And I looked up Oni Savage and Oni Chieftain Elise, and they have zero base skill. And I was like, dude, I gotta try this. So I tried it on a road trip, and it worked. And she still has better hit rates than half the units in FE6. So that should just tell you about well, how. How much? I should just tell you about how long I'm going to keep on this vendetta against FE6. Um, number three, which Fire Emblem game has the best OST? I think it is Fates, but uh, yeah, like, uh, but it's a bit of a bland answer. Um, not necessarily bland, but it's a bit of an obvious answer. So I guess I'll try to give you a top three here. Uh, I would say number one is Fates. Uh, number two would be. Uh, it's. Uh, I think number two is Awakening, and then number three is either like Radiant Dawn. Three Houses or um, Radiant Dawn or Three Houses or Echoes. One of the one of the three. Uh, the thing with Echoes is that the music that it has is fucking excellent, but it has very little of that music. Ah, uh, did I mess up here? Uh, how much defense does he have? It's thirty-seven defense. Then why are these guys dealing zero, zero damage? Hold up, what? Thirty-eight. Okay, well I did fuck up um, because I attacked with Xander. Uh, this is why this is why I had the Arthur's axe, by the way, <laughs> because if I mess up, then it's it's not that much of an issue. Now I have thirty nine defense, and these guys still can't deal the damage to me. All right. Uh. Uh. Yeah. So I would say uh, it's uh, number three is going to. I think I think I'll go, I think I'll give it to three houses because the, especially with the DLC, they add quite a bit of good music. Okay. Uh, moving on to Brent and Vink here. Uh, ask three questions. Number one, your opinion on child units and inheritance. Uh, I think child units from a, from a story perspective, uh, it's, it's a very delicate balance to try to make it work from a plot perspective and try to make it not seem extremely stupid. But uh, from a gameplay perspective, I really think child units are like a great mechanic. I, I, I would like to see them come back more often. Um, the, Fates is a great example of why, like, it's it, uh, this, uh, chi child units and Fates make no sense from the plot perspective. Like, the Deep Realms really don't have any reason to exist. But um, from a gameplay perspective, they add a lot of uh, they add a lot of potential for a wacky build in the game, which I think is a positive for the game. Uh, number two, what's the most wild meme build you did in any game, be it high investment or wild classes? Okay. Um, Surprisingly enough, I don't think I, I'm not. Sh I don't think it's gonna be Fates. Um, 
You know what? You said any game. This one time, uh, I was in an, uh, almost any ability league uh, in Pokemon, and uh, I pulled up with... Uh, I. I no, 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 yeah, I pulled up with, uh, my opponent had a Zapdos and a Heatran, and almost any ability, you can run almost any ability, and that includes run, being able to run, like, Primordial C, which is, uh, Primal Kyogre's, uh, signature ability, uh, on stuff like Zapdos, so you could run, like, Hurricane, Weather Ball, Thunder, and Roost, or U-Turn, or some shit like that, some, some combination of those moves, and it would all be, like, at its maximum power, uh, and, and Heatran, you can, a lot of Heatrans run Desolate Land, so what I did was, I had a Tapu Fini on my draft, uh, I ran um, Utility Umbrella Tapu Fini, I shit you not, the, with Trick. And if you don't know what Utility Umbrella does, don't worry, like, I, I don't think anybody else watching this video does either. Utility Umbrella is a Gen 8 item where if the, the Pokemon equipping it ignores the effects of Sun and Rain. So, um, water moves used against it do the normal damage instead of um, being re uh, increased or reduced based on Rain. Water moves it uses do the same uh, amount of damage. So what I wanted to do was I wanted to trick the Zapdos or the Heatran. So like imagine like the Tapu Fini and it has the Tapu Fini's ability was Volt Absorb. So I I, I tricked the I wanted to trick the Zapdos the Utility Umbrella so that it would become like extremely useless and and then I could and it would also make it so that all of its uh, moves were like much less accurate. Uh, the, so because then because its Thunder would become. 70% um, accuracy again, same with Hurricane, and its Weather Wall Ball would become base 50 power, so it would just not have any water coverage. Um, it didn't work out, but I still won that week, so I'm fine with it. Uh, number three, what's your favorite Pokemon? If people on the Discord would know this, my favorite Pokemon is Mamoswine. I don't even know why, honestly. I just really like Mamoswine. Um, Alright, moving on to Magic asks, have you played any of Kaga's post-intelligent uh, system games? Uh, I played some of Vestaria Saga. I'm just gonna be honest. I just gave up. I, I gave up not because I thought it was like hard or anything. I just felt like it was a bit boring and like, I as much as I'm like a gameplay first guy, like the visuals do matter to some extent. And like Vestaria Saga, it just looked really unappealing to me. I might I might try it out again, but uh, I wouldn't hold your breath out for it. Um, Super Secret asks, what is the best in your opinion secondary class to choose for corn and why? If the answer depends on Corrin's gender, that's fine. Uh, I think that the second best secondary class for Corrin is basically always Wyvern. Uh, Wyvern is just such a cracked class in Fates. You get access to uh, you get access to just Wyvern Lord, which just is a really good combat class, or you get access to Malignite, which has some crazy c good skills. And before promotion, you get access to Strength plus two, and it's got good movement. It's got really everything you could possibly need in a class. Um, now, the thing with that is that oftentimes you're going to find that you want to skill dip for stuff like uh, Elbow Room, but uh, if you go Wyvern as female corn, it's going to be a real big pain in the ass because you're going to have to, you either have to marry somebody that has um, cap talent or uh, or get a friendship with either Sophie or Perry, which it, it's, it's not really, like, it's just as annoying as getting another friendship, but, like, also it's a bit more annoying because they're not fast supports. Like, Core and Xander, for example, is a faster support than most of the, uh, than your average support. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, doing something like Core and Sophie, it's actually quite a slow support. Um, so that's why I always go male Core and Wyvern, because, and also because I like using Felicia. Um, if you, I still think that the benefits of being able to access Wyvern like by like chapter ten are way bet way higher than the detriments of not being able to um, reclass into Cav and get the skills until later because you can still make the stuff, make you can still make do without those things, but making do without Wyvern is a lot harder. Okay, Air Tempest asks uh, th three questions here. First question is why do you choose Lag Spike specifically as uh, a name? So, uh, this actually comes down to, uh, back when I was living in Indiana, uh, I tried to, I wanted to go for my first, like, local Smash Bros. tournament, and, uh, there you have to pick, uh, you have to, you know, you, you gotta pick a tag, and I didn't wanna, so my tag at that point was, like, the only tag that I used was, like, my freaking, uh, Minecraft tag from, like, I don't know, like, fucking five years ago, which is, like, Ender Steve, and, like, it had, like, the XX shit on it, so it was super cringe, and I would not be caught dead using that um, anymore. So I was like, That's, this is just not happening. Uh, so at that point, I still um, mostly played Ike. I now mostly play Krom, and I have, have a secondary wolf. Uh, so I was like, I don't know, pick something with Ike in it, and you can make it a shitty pun. And I was like, lag, spike, and then Ike was in it. And then 
and then I just ditched the whole Ike thing, and I just thought that it was a pretty decent, uh, pretty decent tag, and I've just stuck with it for this whole time. Honestly, pretty fucking solid tag, all things considered. You could you could have fucking Doctor PP, but I've I'm chilling with Lag Spike, which is a pretty decent tag. Um, number two, would you ever try doing a run of Fate's Reverse Recruitment Any Route? Uh, I've already done and completed a run of uh, Conquest Reverse Recruitment. I didn't do it, like, rec I didn't record it, but I did do it. Uh, it was fun, but it was really fucking stupid. Uh, I don't think that I would do- I, I, it's not that I don't think it's good, but it took a lot out of me, like, from- it took a lot of energy to do that, so I, I don't know if I would be willing to go through that again. Um, let's see, Percy has 42 defense with the rally. Okay, uh, go here. Yeah. Um, uh, question number three. Do you play any TCGs like Yu-Gi-Oh! or MTG? Yes, actually. I play Magic the Gathering. Um, I don't play it quite as much uh, these days, but I used to play Magic the Gathering all the fucking time. And I still have some Commander decks left over from those days. Uh, it's, a, it's, just a, it's just a game that I really enjoy playing. I think the complexity is a lot. I tried out both Yu-Gi-Oh! and uh, Pokemon. It just was not for me. Like I, the, Magic the Gathering is the only TCG where I've been actually like willing to keep playing. Um, yeah, okay, uh, let's scroll up here a little bit. Okay, uh, Simon Duquis asks, sorry if I butchered your name, by the way, asks, which Fire Emblem games do you think the developers are the happiest with? As in, the final product matched what their original vision was. Um, I think Radiant Dawn, honestly, because Radiant Dawn is, uh, like, it's, I think it's like a, it's a, honestly beautiful when it comes to like how much effort is put into Radiant Dawn, there's so much stuff that's like a like a, that just shows up for like a little bit of time just to have some more gameplay plot coherence, and then it never shows up again. It it has a lot of uh, love and care for the game for the world of Tellius and the plot. I think so. Uh, yeah, I, I I think it would be Radiant Dawn. Uh, do I enjoy any board games? Um, I mean, I think you would be hard pressed to find people that just don't enjoy any board games at all. Yeah, I enjoy a lot. I, I, you can get me to play any tabletop game, except for like D&D. &D. Not because I think it's bad, but because I just don't have the attention span to keep playing D&D &D for long sessions. Um, but uh, yeah, I think my favorite right now would have to be the Binding of Isaac uh, card game, which is, uh, well, I guess it's not technically a board game, but uh, uh, Bi Binding of Isaac Four Souls, um, it's, it's a fun time. Uh, it takes a lot of influences from Magic Gathering while still maintaining that, you know, Isaac flavor. Um, but if I had to say, like, board game, board game, I'd say, like, I don't know, like, Monopoly or something. Um, okay, uh, number, question number three is, which Fire Emblem mechanic would you like to be brought back for the future entry, and which would you like not to come back? Okay, I'm still fucking pissed that the base system from the Tellius games hasn't come back yet. There's actually zero good reason for it to not be back. I don't get it. Um, so yeah, that's a pretty question, easy question to answer on the first half. The second half, something that I definitely do not want to come back is, um, I don't, I don't want to say Divine Pulse because I think it's actually a fine mechanic from, from like a consumer's perspective. Uh, from our perspective, it might be pretty, it's kind of uh, annoying, but, uh, I think, I think for the people that it's made for, it's a very solid mechanic. I think one thing that I, uh, don't want to have come back is, um, Hard mode bonuses, maybe either hard mode bonuses or like um, or Phoenix mode, one of those two. Um, hard mode bonuses, I, 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 the concept isn't horrible, but I just think that uh, it's just a bit of an arbitrary way to make random units better. Um, I'd much rather you give the army more resources, like they do in FE12, than you just give certain unit certain units more stats in hard mode. Um, and uh, yeah, that's all for Simon's uh, questions. Uh, Kumomichi asks, why is Rev in A tier? I already spent eight minutes on this in the game tier list, but um, uh, talking about why I felt that Rev deserved an A tier. But the main the main uh, idea is that I think that Revelation is a... It's, it is Fates. Revelation is, at its core, Fates. And it's nothing more, nothing less than Fates. And I just think that... Uh, oh, thank God we have a shield gauge. Uh, I just think that uh, it's... It's still Fates. Birthright, for example, is not Fates. It's like FE8 or FE9 disguised as Fates. Uh, but uh, Rev still brings that same level of, you know, like, to, to some extent, that level of gameplay complexity uh, that uh, Conquest has, which, which, is what, which is what I like about Fates. And um, I just don't think I can hate on it as much. Also, I think that some of the map issues are overblown. Like the snow shoveling map, um, if, you, if, you, like, if you just go and 
kill the boss kill the boss it takes like fucking two it takes like two to three minutes this is not an exaggeration by the way it takes like two to three minutes to beat that map um and the enemies aren't super threatening there's a couple of calves and mages but like you can deal with them all that clutch defense level up now now uh, percy can wait around while uh, xander deals with the uh the massive rock guys um yeah uh i'd say that's that's the that's the main gist of the argument um UD Timberhog asks, uh, what fate's weapon do I use the most? Uh, bronze axe, I would say. Uh, if you want to talk about non like generic weapons, I would say the weapon that I use the most are like be uh, are effective weapons, probably hammer. Uh, the hammer is the weapon that I use the most. Uh, let's see, just check to make sure. Yeah, these guys don't do any damage, and also he one one round KOs them, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I can just send him out into the fray. Uh, now Xander's going to start. Uh, oh, this is annoying because because I want to. Um, well, actually, you know what I could do is thirty nine. Oh, that's annoying. Um, see, the the issue that I have right now is that oh, I guess I could equip the Arthur's axe. I'd rather not. So the issue right now is that these guys deal damage to me. Uh, but but like if I just have the uh, Lucky Star equipped, you know what? I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go. Uh, kill all the enemies that still give exp that are uh that i could kill so this 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 guy and then um the, these two golems with percy and then i'll see if i get a defense level up and if i do get a defense level up then i can just move up and have xander rally for percy and keep it going um uh anyways uh Sorry, back to the questions. The second question is, do you prefer stu uh, do you prefer soup, stir fry, or sandwiches more? I really appreciate these kinds of questions because there's uh, there uh, it's just kind of fun to answer random questions. Uh, I, I I'm gonna be honest, I don't even fucking know what stir fry is at this. I probably do, but I don't have like a concrete definition for what it is. So uh, and I don't mind soup, but I don't consume it that much. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go for sandwiches and. There's a whole debate in there about what what constitutes a sandwich, and there's like a sandwich alignment chart, uh, which, by the way, I my I I actually forget where I fall on the sandwich alignment chart, but yeah, no, um, I would say sandwiches, and um, uh, the third question is this is my this is my favorite one of these three. You're leading bulky Heatran against Lando T turn one. Do you set up rocks, switch out, or call its U turn and toxic the switch in? Uh, I'm gonna be honest. There's actually more options here than meet the eye. The, there's also the option of uh, clicking magma storm, uh, which is a real savage play, um, on, which, on either the Pokemon that's in or on the switch in. Um, I would not do that, by the way. I would not do that. Um, I'm either. Uh, I think I'm either uh, getting up rocks or toxic. And also, you don't have to toxic the switch. You could just be toxicing the Lando T itself. Uh, I think, like. Okay, it depends on what level of the ladder I'm in. If I'm if I'm on like thir like if I'm anywhere between thirteen hundred and sixteen hundred ladder, I'm I'm getting up rocks. If I'm either below thirteen hundred or above sixteen hundred, I'm switching out to something that's going to be able to take an earthquake. <laughs> um, uh, Mr. Krusty Crust asks, number one, what's your favorite song from a video game? Uh, this is this is a you got you guys got to stop asking these general questions that make it really tough to answer um Shit, dude, that's such a tough question to answer. So, um There's quite a few series that I enjoy a lot of music from obviously Fire Emblem has great soundtracks But also stuff like uh, persona like like persona 4's OST is one that I heavily enjoy um, Persona 5 I also like but I prefer persona 4's OST. I just think it vibes with me better um yeah, that's a tough question. Um, there's also, but the, and there's also like uh, miscellaneous games, like uh, you know, like uh, uh, well, I guess Mega Man X isn't really a miscellaneous game, but also stuff like Kid Icarus Uprising, which has a fucking goaded soundtrack. Um, I would say that my favorite favorite song from a video game is um, yeah, and there's also like the Danganronpa games with great sound. You know what? Okay. Locking it in. Signs of Love, Persona 4. Um, unless I can think of anything better. Yeah, no, it's Signs of Love, Persona 4. That's my, that's my final answer. Um, question number two is, what are your hopes for the next main series Fire Emblem game? I just hope that it's fun. Like, I, I don't really, like, I'm always willing to deal with new stuff. 
and also I'm uh, like uh, I'm like a little bit tired of the self insert. It's fine, like I can live with it, but I think I think some more variants would be very welcome in my opinion. Um, also, bring back the fucking base system, and a remake would be nice. I don't I don't need it, but uh, again, I'm just saying it would be nice to have a remake. Um, yeah, what are your uh, number three? What are your thoughts on other turn based grid movement type games? My brother in Christ just called them tactical RPGs such as Triangle Strategy and Pokemon Conquest. I have not played Pokemon Conquest. I have played Triangle Strategy. That game is fucking good. Triangle Strategy, if you're a Fire Emblem fan, I would I would say play Triangle Strategy uh, if you can, because it's a very, very, very good game. Um, but uh, yeah, I haven't really tried many other tactical RPGs. I guess like Advance Wars. Um, I, I should probably... I, I should maybe try to get on like that Final Fantasy Tactics stuff, but I don't really like the whole like weird like like the way that those games handle like reclassing and stuff is just a bit odd to me. But I, mean, I don't know. I think it's just something you gotta get used to. Um, all right, uh, Zach O'Neill asks, "What makes you like Rev so much when so many people in the community think it's garbage?" Um, well, there is the obvious thing where, you know, it's part of, uh, being a contrarian means that you get a lot more attention on the internet, but also I genuinely do think that Rev is a lot better than people. It's, it's the thing, it's the same thing as, like, Perry, where I kind of go to bat for it a lot more than I actually, like, believe in, mostly because the public opinion is already so negative against it. So, you know, if people were like, Rev is, if people were like, Rev is, like, is like um like fifth fifth or sixth from the bottom when it comes to the Fire Emblem series ranking. Then I would be like, you know what? Like I could see it. Like it, that's a fair take. But people are like, in, consistently people are like, yeah, no, Rev is the worst Fire Emblem game, and I just do not respect that kind of opinion at all. Defense, defense. Oh, goaded. Um, this dude is fat as fuck at this point. How much? This guy has 40, 40 defense. Holy shit. Um. Yeah, no, that, that, that's mainly the reason why I stick stand up for Rev. Because there's nobody else that's going to do it. So I, I gotta be the guy that does it. Um, uh, and uh, do you plan on playing any more games on the channel soon? Uh, you know, I think that's I think that's a thing to leave up to the viewers. Would you guys like to see me play other things? Yeah. yeah. Again, I often ask, like, if you guys want to see anything new, please leave it in the comments. Uh... But a lot of these are Fire Emblem related, and for example, I, I've done some of these uh, Fire Emblem related things, like the class guide with Zoran, uh, which was a blast. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to see any games that you think would work for this channel, I mean, when the new Pokemon game comes, I'm probably gonna play it. I, I, well, I'm I'm gonna buy it and then I'm gonna emulate it because I don't have the because uh, I don't have the Switch capture card. Um, I, I just I, I just don't I just the the main reason that I don't do this is because. Um, people uh, people come to this channel for conquest and when I've tried to make uh, uh, variety stuff in the past before it hasn't done as well like when I made like the manga stuff like the like the Umineko shit posting video did well but that's because it's a shit post and it's it's like literally like less than a minute long so it's very easy to watch and also I like gave it a bunch of hashtags and the Umineko fandom is always on the hunt for more shit posting um, but yeah uh, if you guys want to see any good games please leave it in the comments uh, Zoran co-host LP when at this point I've imposed on Zoran too many times I've asked him for help on videos. I've asked him for help on scripts I've asked him for help on like like showing up on videos for me doing publicity for me I've asked him for too much help too many times so Unless he asks me to do an, an LP. I, I refuse I, I refuse to impose any more on him. I just feel like it would be very rude at this point um so if you can get him on board, then I'm down. But I, I just don't. I just, I just feel like it would be a, I don't know. I just feel like it would be a bit much to keep asking for so much stuff. Um, okay. Br Barstow's asks uh, three questions here. One, any really cool builds in Revelation that can only be done on that route? Actually, uh, there are. Uh, one of my favorites is Sizo X Charlotte. Because you can do because Saizo is actually a unit that has quite a bit of bulk as a ninja, and you can very easily just get him into uh, mer, mer, uh, hero off a of fighter, get an HP plus five soul, put him back into master ninja, and he does he does the damn thing. And also, their kid is going to be fucking strong. Their kid's going to be jacked as hell. And you, so you can pick either Charlotte or uh, Asugi to um, backpack Saizo when he's doing his soul master ninja thing, and the other person can just be a strong ass berserker. Uh. 
Number two, which other Fire Emblem would you make content for? Um, I'm pretty open to making content for basically any Fire Emblem, except for, like, Gaiden. Except for Gaiden, Echoes, like, FE4, um, let's see, FE1, I guess. Um... Maybe Shadow Dragon, though I wouldn't be I wouldn't be super opposed to making Shadow Dragon content if it came to that. Um And to some extent three houses, because three houses runs take a fucking long ass time to do. Uh the main reason I picked those games is because it's it, the it, they're, those games are very slow. So I, I and I don't really have too much fun playing them. The most the things that I would the games I would most be willing to do content for are Thracia, F E twelve, um either the Tellius games, uh or or like FE8 and Reb, obviously. Um, number three, in your opinion, what's the best sell in a build? Uh, it can either be on Revelation or Conquest. I just love Myrmidons, and she's the closest thing to it in Fates besides Samurais. I'm here to burst your bubble. Samurais, Samurai are Myrmidons. They're just given a different name. Um, Selena build, honestly, as much as I talk trash about the build, um, Bar uh, Baruka or Camilla getting an A support with Selena and then putting Selena into Wyvern is probably your best bet. Um, uh, it's, it's a pretty it's a pretty solid way to make a build. Uh, it's, it's going to get her a lot of defense. She has okay strength. It's going to nuke her skill stat, but bronze weapons exist for a reason. Um, I would say it's a, I would say it's a solid build. Uh, B rank axis, holy shit. Uh, Aside from that, I think, I guess you could do, like, like, sicko mode rally Selena with, uh, like, uh, get, get, like, I, uh, get rally skill from, uh, Bow Knight, uh, rally, rally speed from Falconite, rally strength from a Berserker friend or, uh, husband, um, and then, and then another friendship to get, uh, actually, yeah, get, get, get Berserker from her husband and then go get Camilla or Baruka for her friend and go into Wyvern Lord to get Rally Defense. But at that point, you're, you're accessing so many good classes just to get Rally skills. It just feels a bit, like, a bit of a waste. But, yeah, no, uh, I think those are the best selling the builds. You can also, uh, also an, um, it's not necessarily the best selling the build, but it's a pretty decent build is just, like, either early promoting her or just promoting her into Bow Knight and just getting her a good husband, honestly. Her speed is fine. Her strength could use some help, but thankfully there are more than enough strength backpacks and conquests to facilitate what you want to do with her. Alright, uh, Bruna Olinto asks, Yay, q and fun. Alright, three questions here. Number one, if you had to give any Fates unit a new Heart Seal class, who would you pick and what class would you get? Uh, it, I'm picking either Felicia or Parry, because Bow Knight is a really fucked up thing to give a magical unit like her, and Parry... And mag and dark mage is a really fucked up thing to give a physical unit like uh, Perry. Uh, I would say either give I honestly sw maybe switching their hard seal classes would make it a bit better, but or and giving either of them wyvern wyvern would make them a lot better as well. Uh, yeah, that's that's about it. Um, question number two from the games that have reclassing, which ones which one do you think has the best system and why? Um, I would say either Fates and Awakening or um, Fates and Awakening are pretty similar when it comes to their reclass systems. It's just there's like a little bit of a difference in the fact that uh, it's a lot easier to access classes in in Awakening than it is in Fates. But uh, I would say either Fates and Awakening or FE12. Like it, depending on whether you want a bit more of a restriction on it or whether you just want to go fucking sicko mode. Yeah. And uh, number three is what do you hope for in the next game in the series when it comes to gameplay? When it comes to gameplay. Honestly, um, I mean, if we got pair up back, that would be fucking awesome, but that's not happening because it's a 3DS skill, I mean, 3DS mechanic. Uh, I, again, I, I think the base system being back would be just really awesome. Um, Frosty asks, favorite Fire Emblem unit? Um, this is also an extremely loaded question, and I kind of have to think about this one for a minute. You know what? Give me Wendell. He's Wendell's the fucking goat in every single game that he's in. I, I thought about it and I was like, a lot of Fates units, they're 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 not necessarily consistently good across both the routes that they're in, or maybe all three of the routes that they're in. So I would say I would say give me Wendell. Wendell's really good in FE one. He's good in FE three. He's good in FE eleven. He's good in FE twelve. He's just a just a he's just a Chad dude. Um. Okay. Uh, Zappy McCraw asks. 
Uh, what is your favorite Fire Emblem ROM hack, if any? All right, first that's the first question. Um, I it's been a while since I've actually played any Fire Emblem ROM hacks. Um, uh, it's it's tough to think of because uh, honestly, like I've really grown disillusioned with the GBA system over the years. So um, I would say that my favorite ROM hack is probably Justice and Pride, um, because it's not that hard. And it's still pretty fun, you know. Like you can do some wacky stuff with it. Uh, there, the, it does go some stat, go for some stat inflation towards the late towards the late game. But if you're doing it like at end game, then it's it's fine. As, and as long as your units like can keep up with it, I don't really give a shit. Um, what is your favorite unit build in Fates and why? Uh, have I already answered this? No, I said that uh, I said that a cool build that you can do in Rev. So uh, my favorite unit build in Fates is probably like. Um, Mm. Okay, my, yeah, my favorite unit build in Fates, actually, I know I know exactly what it is. It's uh, Falconite Sakura with Triple Rally, Darting Blow, and Warding Blow. Because what you can do is you can get her into, uh, early promote her into Onmyoji, get her uh, Rally Magic, so she has Rally Magic, Rally Luck, and then um, once she gets Rally Magic, you turn put her into Sky Knight, and then you struggle with your Lance rank for like a year. Uh, and then you eventually put her, and then you eventually get Rally Speed as well, and then eventually Warding Blow, and then she goes crazy with the Bolt 99. You know, it's, it's a fun build. Um, what is my favorite breakfast food? Oh, this is this is, this is is that good shit right here. Um, I'm a very big omelet believer. Uh, I, I think omelets are an excellent food, especially for breakfast. You know, eggs are very filling. I, I think I would say omelets. Um, Dark Metal Master uh, asks, three questions here. Number one, how did you meet Zoran? Well... We haven't, well, when you say meet, like, how did I come across him? Well, obviously, it's the same thing as I think everybody else, which is that you came across, like, one of the best video, best made Fireman videos you've seen in your life about Fates, and you go, who the fuck made this? And you go, Zoran, all right, maybe I should remember this guy for later. And he just keeps popping up, and you recommend it, and you go, wow, this guy's really good at video making. And then you eventually, and then, um, basically, it, um, when I came up with the idea of the Fates skill tier list, I was like, there's no way nobody's done this yet, right? And then I looked it up, and nobody's done it yet for no, for some reason. I don't know why nobody had done the Fates uh, skill tier list by the time that uh, Zoran and I did it. It seemed like a, it was a very, um, it seemed like it was a very uh, well, necessarily may, not necessarily easy, but it was a pretty like, uh, pretty obvious uh, video concept to come up with. So I'm, anyways, I yeah, uh, and then I was like, I, I think that this video, if I made the video by myself. If some people would see it because my channel my channel was very very small at that point it was like maybe like 50 subs um some people would see it but i, I don't think uh like i just think that people would not see it as much uh and it, even less from like increasing my like s subscriber base i wanted to make I, I want to make content that that resonates with the fates community i guess but i want i want people to be able to enjoy the things i put work into so i thought that uh, it would be a great idea to, to hit zoran up because um I thought that, you know, if he, he, worst case is he says, no, I can't really do that. Uh, and then I go, all right, fair enough. And then I make the video on my own and it does fine. Um, it does fine for my uh, demographic, but then not that well. But, you know, like, uh, like not that well compared to how it would have been with Soren. And then, you know, I hit him up and he's like, yeah, that sounds great. And uh, yeah, he was really great about the whole thing. Uh, so yeah, that's how I started, did the Fates tier list, uh, the uh, skills tier list. And after that was how, how I got the courage to approach Rengor and be like, hey, you want to do this three houses thing where you can talk shit, talk, uh, talk shit to me for like uh, three hours? And he was like, yeah, sounds great. And I got shit talked for a couple of hours. It was, it was, it was fun. Um, do you like, uh, sorry, uh, second question is, what are your thoughts on the Fire Emblem Fates DLCs since you never used them in run? So I played the Heirs of Fate DLC. Uh, I thought it was actually rather fun, but I mean, obviously it's quite short, so... Um, yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Vanguard Dawn, I played it. I think my favorite part about it is that they tried to do the ledges uh, as much as possible. They tried to make the ledges work, which is which is really funny to me. And also, I think it's awesome to you know have like a gameplay shout out to the uh, to the game that it's based off. Of. And also, they have the they have the music in. Uh, they, they have the music from them. It's great. It's a it's just a fun time. Um. Uh, uh, other than that, I don't really, like, I don't really like, like, you know, Beach Brawl, like, okay, dude, sure, whatever. You know, I just don't really fuck with the DLC too much. 
Um, number three, do you like the look of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet so far? This is actually a pretty interesting question. So, I've been keeping up with all the, um, uh, the, the news. I've also been keeping up with the leaks, but I'm not going to talk about them here, because not only are they not, not, uh, like, after the Grinch leak, I don't trust anything. Uh, but also because, you know, I don't want to spoil people on things that may or may not even be in the game. Um, I think that this, this terrestrializing mechanic, if I can be honest with it, it seems like the least intrusive gameplay mechanic we've had and like least uh, so, uh, for, for like a long time like out of the full out of the out of dynamax z moves and uh megastones and terrestrializing this seems like the most like the the most harmless it still seems pretty powerful in some situations like you know like water type scissor or something um so the heat trend comes in and just gets blown the fuck back but it still seems it's it seems fine um I really just wish they deleted Toxapex from the game, but unfortunately it's already been confirmed to be in the game, you know? We can't all have what we want, I guess. Um, this this Paldean Whooper shit is making me very excited because, um, I'm, I, if you guys don't know, I play Monotype relatively frequently and I'm basically a ground type one trick. Uh, and uh, having a Mon, uh, you always run something that has a water immunity on the ground type team. That's just what you do. So you either run um, Gastrodon, you, the, the typical picks are either Gastrodon with Storm Drain, which is what I usually do, or Seismitoad with Water Absorb, uh, which is a bit more of an unorthodox pick, but is also something that people do um, somewhat frequently. Uh, but yeah, no, I'm a, I'm a Gastrodon guy. So I, when I saw that there's a new Water Absorb Mon and it's a Quagsire, and keep in mind that Poison Ground is actually a pretty good defensive typing. Um, it's just that it, it, like, when it comes to its resistances, it's just that it has quite a few weaknesses. And the fact that the, um, it's going to get rid of the, uh, the water weakness makes it so much better. Like, let, let me look something up here. So, yeah, um, you get, a, you get a, a resistance to fighting, you get a quad resistance to poison, which if you care about that, you get a resistance to rock, bug, and fairy, uh, in exchange for being, and, a, and an electric immunity, keep in mind. And uh, in exchange for being weak to ground, water, psychic, and ice, which are both, which are all pretty common typings, which makes it a bit tough to make it work. That's why Nido King is so frail. But if you get rid of one of those weaknesses, ground, psychic, ice, those, that's weaknesses you can deal with, especially on a mon if it's like if it's bulky enough. Um, like just look at Heatran; it's quad weak to ground, but it's still like top five usage every single generation. Heatran, you know, it's the goat. Um, yeah, uh, I I'm very excited to see this, and also it tells Toxapex to go suck a fat cock, and which, which is I'm which I'm always always looking forward to. Anything that tells uh, Toxapex that it's a bitch is um, is always like welcomed by me. Uh, moving on to the next question. A person, what, what the fuck is his name? Due to personal reasons. Ah, okay. Uh, <laughs> There's, um, there's actually, th okay, th here we go. Do, uh, there's three questions here. Uh, if you were a unit in Fire Emblem, any game, what would you like gameplay wise? Um, I'd like to be like, I think I'd like to be the most mid ass unit in the game so that like people, like, I, I don't, I don't want any discussions to be about me ever. So I, I'd want to be like the, like the, like the, like the Laszlo of the bunch, you know, like just a very like salt, like a solid unit, but nothing game breaking or, or even like often worth mentioning. Um, so I guess like a mercenary or something. Yeah. Mercenary. Um, number two, what is something Fire Emblem is missing that you would love for it to have? What is something Fire Emblem is missing that you would love for it to have? This is, that's, that's a tough question to answer. Um, uh, because fire, like the a lot of the things that I like about the genre are, I like them because I know them from Fire Emblem. <laughs> um, uh, I don't actually know. What is something that Fire Emblem does not have that you want it to have? Uh, oh, like right now, uh, like I, 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 I hope that they like hire like an in studio. Um, like I hope they hire like a. Uh, uh, um, they hire like a consistent like animation studio for their uh, for their stuff because it just feels a bit like there's a lot of disparate stuff because because so, Pathfinder's cutscenes look different from Fate's cutscenes which look same as Awakening cutscenes but those look different from Echo's cutscenes which look different from Three Houses cutscenes. I think that if you they just like I think that picking just one animation studio to stick with um, 
would be fine. As long as the animation studio is good, obviously. Uh, number three, would you play a Fire Emblem game set in a different time period and or not a primarily European-based setting? Yeah, actually, that's actually something that I've wanted to see for quite a while. Um, I, that's why that's part of why I like Fate so much because it has like a different like cultural influences and stuff. Um, I think like a game set in the Middle East or something would be based, dude. Like uh, then again, like half the maps would be desert maps, but also you would have like a camel riders and shit. So you could, I think you could make it work. I just think that there th there could be. Uh, there is definitely a lot of untapped potential for locational variety in Fire Emblem, like setting variety and setting in Fire Emblem, um, and also like a Fire Emblem game, like but it's like uh, but but it's like uh, set in like I don't know, uh, set in like the fucking 1900s or something would be kind of crazy. It would make no sense from the series perspective, but it would be kind of funny. Um, moving on, Wheaties asks, "What is your favorite Fire Emblem class?" Uh, my favorite Fire Emblem class, I think it's, uh, I think it's either Mercenary. I think Mercenary is, a, uh, it's either Mercenary or because of Fates. Uh, actually, hold up, let me think about this for a second. Yeah, it's Mercenary. It's Mercenary. Um, Mercenary and more specifically Hero. Um, what color is my toothbrush? Hold up, I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my toothbrush here. It's an electric toothbrush. I don't know if you can hear that. Um, it's m the body is mainly white and gray, but the brush itself is like blue and green. Um, I can't really be more specific than that. <laughs> uh, thanks for the question, I guess. I gotta go put this thing back now. Okay, um, PK Flamethrower asks, uh, which Fire Emblem game do you want to get the Echoes treatment next? Um, I feel like your definition and my definition of what the Echoes treatment is uh, very, very much. <laughs> um, I, uh, for me, the Echoes treatment means that the game is just way too faithful to its source material to a fault. Um, whereas I, I, I think that it could pro probably mean something else for you. If I, if I run this Arthur's Axe, oh, he's so close. Okay, I think I do this. If he gets a defense level up and I maybe just switch to the Arthur's Axe. Um, And I need to definitely get something equipped on Xander right now. Okay, skill speed. He doesn't have any strength, man. Okay. Uh, I think it would. I think it would have to be uh, Path of Radiance because the thing with Path of Radiance is that all, every single issue that the game has, aside from like the game being too enemy face focused, which is just like a like a gameplay like difference, um, it was just like a meta difference, uh, I should say. Uh, is is a f is a b is because of the fact that it's a relic from the past. The game kind of looks like shit, and there's no like enemy phase skip. And I don't think any remake would be willing to sacrifice modern convenience to any degree to like make it what like make a remake. I just don't think that the industry standard even allows for something like like a product like that to exist. So yeah, I think that. Uh, a remake for Path of Radiance would base as long as if they keep literally everything else the same. I, I feel like it would be one of my favorite. It would be maybe be my favorite game. Um, favorite Pokemon generation. I've already answered this, but it's Gen Six. Well, I guess I'll give you my second favorite Pokemon generation. My second favorite Pokemon generation is Gen Four, mostly because of Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Uh, it's either that or Gen Seven. Um, okay, the Gloop asks. Uh, what do you find the most compelling about games you play? Like, what do you look for in games that's fun to you? For example, I gravitate to games where there's a feeling of accumulation of knowledge and a good sense of progression, like learning how the class system works in Fate and seeing the real rewards in real time as I abuse it. So, uh, my favorite thing in games is like, I guess I guess saying just gameplay was not specific enough for this question, um, but like, I'll just preface it by saying that for me, gameplay is paramount. But I think that um, one thing that's really important for me is that a, a game needs to be um, trans. That there needs to be a feeling of transparency between a game and the player. Because if the player and the game aren't able to communicate properly, then something has gone seriously wrong. Uh, I think that without, um, without the, like the, without some transparency, the games, uh, games industry is basically fucked. Because like, you're nobody's gonna be able to tell what these complicated mechanics are. That's that's another thing that I had when another issue that I had when I played like Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition. Like even by the end, like I tried to read as many of the like tutorials things that I could, but like by the end I still don't didn't know what the what tension meant. Like it it, it tells you 
it tells you everything, but you learn very um, very little comparatively speaking. So I, I think the com transparency between game and player is very important. And also, uh, gameplay plot um, coherence. Um, I think the Tellius games do this very well. It, I, I believe that the either the gameplay should serve the... I think the gameplay should serve the plot. I, I don't think the gameplay is the first thing... I don't think the plot should be made to serve the gameplay because I think you would end up making a lot of compromise in the plot, which would end up compromising it. Uh, which would end up making the game a you know a worse overall experience. But I think that like if you have a good plot, you should try to build the game to work with that plot as much as possible and make it feel you know immersive, basically. Like for example, like I bring this uh, uh, topic up a lot, but in Radiant Dawn, the prologue for Effie, uh, the prologue for part two is not only the only map in the series where you, it takes place entirely in the air. It's also the only map in the series to feature cloud uh, cloud terrain. It's also, I think, the only map in the series to feature moving terrain, and also, uh, it's also, and also, it's only the, the only map in Radiant Dawn which has a capture mechanic for the enemies because if the enemies capture Leanne, you lose. Uh, but it's not really like a super like it's like it's it's basically like r rescue but different, um, and it's all done for exactly one map. That level of dedication to gameplay is. I think it makes a game so much more immersive and enjoying that uh, enjoyable that I, I think that most, if not all, games should try to at least uh, aspire to that level. Uh, the second thing I ca care the most about in games is uh, music, and I, I can't really. Uh, it's music is obviously subjective, so I guess I just have to leave that there. Do uh, number two, do you have bad m or mediocre units that you always use? all the time. Yeah, this the, I, I like to call them salt units, which is where I fucking hate that the, the units are designed that way, so I use them to just to show how shitty the game is. And 99% of the time, this happens in FE6, uh, where like I'll use, I'll use units like fucking, uh, um, I'll use like literally any axe unit and they suck ass, but I use them just because, uh, just to prove a point, <laughs> basically. It's a bit petty, but you know, it's, it's what I do. How much defense does corn have? The answer is not enough. Yeah, no. Um, anyways, yeah, no, that's that. That's my answer to that. And also, like, I guess in uh, Thracia, um, I think Olwyn has been considered uh, to be a mediocre unit, though I still think that she's better than people give her credit for, um, because of the because of the access to Dire Thunder and how easy it is to get uh, just put a um, put advantage scroll on her. And also, even if her accuracy is pretty bad for the first couple of chapters after her join, she's able to hit Oko thresholds on enemies for like two chapters after her join. So she just needs to hit one of her two Dire Thunder hits. Um, so yeah, I use Olwyn and I guess Kalyan too by that uh, by that same logic every single run. Um, favorite item in Isaac. All right, I need to pull up the item list. Uh, what is it called? Um, platinum god.co.uk there we go okay um <laughs> let me see uh i'll be back give me a second i'm gonna pause this video so basically uh, i think about for my favorite items i'm a big fan of all like tier effects which i'm pretty sure everybody is but i think what out of my favorite i think death's touch would be uh up there um it's either death's touch or like cricket's body or something like that um but if you want to talk about more like items that I think are not talked about enough, it would have to be Mom's box of trinkets, especially in Repentance, where there's like fifty thousand insanely powerful trinkets. Uh, Mom's box of trinkets is an, is a, is one hell of an item. Um, the fact that it doubles your trinket usage is crazy. So so you could get like perfection for beating three bosses without taking damage and have plus twenty luck, which means that you are set for like like uh, consumable drops for the rest of the fucking game off of that one item and it's a four room recharge and you can't uh, you can't spawn like two of the same trinket so you're eventually going to cycle through a good trinket because there's a lot of good trinkets um and also on top of that it doubles the effect of your trinkets which is crazy so if you get cancer it's like insane tears upgrade and curved horn is insane damage upgrade um petrified poop oh my god don't even get me started holy shit you're going to be uh that's not actually a joke. You're gonna be rolling in money. It's, it's a, it's a very solid item. Uh, Purple Echo asks, um, favorite Pokemon? As I said, it's Mamoswine. But if I had to, but you know, like, uh, like I did with the other ones, I'll tell you my second favorite Pokemon. My second favorite Pokemon is, is it, is it, it's either Gallade or Blaziken, but I forget. Give me a second here. 
it's Gallade. It's Gallade. My second favorite Pokemon is Gallade because uh, ever since I played Oras and you know you go into that cave and it's like the like the like the Sakura petals are flowing down and it's doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. what a badass moment, bro. Wally, Wally's the goat. Um, yeah, ever since that, Gallade's been one of my favorite Pokemon. Um, number two, games that I enjoy playing outside of Effie. Uh, if there's a series of games that I would like, I, I'm I, like. I, um, I'm surprisingly uh, quite tolerant of like like VN games. So you know, I, I played Umineko, fucking blast. By the way, I read the manga first, but it was still absolutely excellent. If you want something that's gonna fuck your brain up, Umineko, when they cry, you cannot do any better than that. Um, uh, I'm also, uh, I'm also like, uh, but when it comes to series, I guess I'm a. Well, no, I'm not Mario, because it's really only Odyssey that I feel like has great controls. And Odyssey in 3D World and 3D Land, I guess. Um, 60, 64 fucking dog shit controls on that game. I, I cannot play Super Mario 64. Horrible camera, horrible controls. Uh, even if the game is good, I can't deal with that kind of shit in a, in a platformer. Um, a 3D platformer. But um, I would say the Metroid games, I'd say, is, is like the series that I consistently enjoy outside of Fire Emblem. Um, yeah, I think that's the pick. Uh, the Metroid series. I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, uh, not Metroid 1. That game fucking sucks. Uh, Me Me Metroid Zero Mission, great game. Um, AM2R, I guess. Uh, good game. The, 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 the Samus Returns remake on the 3DS, I didn't really, I was I didn't really enjoy that one as much. I just realized Xander's out, so I gotta, I gotta put right here. Um, uh, after that, I mean, fucking Super Metroid. Very good game, though it has some issues. I, I, people say that you can't remake Super Metroid. I really think you could remake Super Metroid to make things a bit, a bit less like obtuse. There's a lot of points in Super Metroid where you go, "What the fuck am I supposed to do here?" And it's just some random cryptic nonsense that you have to figure out somehow. Um, yeah. So Super Metroid. Um, obviously, recently Metroid Dread played that game, dude. The schmoo factor in Metroid De Dread is out of this fucking world. You can you can schmoo in that game like uh, in very few other roguelikes. I've, like even like even in great games that people are like, this game is fucking the goat. Like like Hollow Knight. I don't think that game even has as much of a schmoo factor as Dread does. You can you can schmoo in Dread. Um, yeah, uh, and number three is when can you coach me on Gen Eight OU? Uh, I'm just gonna be honest. If you want a coach for Gen 8 OU, you are not asking the correct person. Uh, I'm gonna give you some bullshit heat team that's gonna get you killed. And also, I also suck at Gen 8 OU. Uh, if you want, if you want some coaching in Monotype, maybe I could hook you up with some. Uh, and even then, I'm only a ground one trick with some experience in Dragon. Um, and even then, just Dragon, Dragon is fucking hell to play because Dragon versus Dragon is just who wins the Drag Pult Speed tie wins the entire match. It's so annoying. Um, I'm telling you, that's actually not an exaggeration. Every single Dragon v Dragon matchup I've ever played has boiled down to who wins the Drag Pult Speed tie. Um, yeah. Moving on to Atomic X. Uh, as to what my what's my favorite Pokemon, I guess I'll give you my third favorite Pokemon, which is Blaziken. Um, another another Gen Three Mon. Uh, you know, I, I, I guess you can tell how much of an effect um, Aura has had on my uh, Pokemon mindset. Um, Stylebred asks. Number one, what's your favorite Fire Emblem class? I think I already said it's it's Mercenary. Uh, who's your favorite bad unit? Um, who's my favorite bad unit? This is. A, I don't really. Oh, dude, you know you know who it is. It's literally anybody that sucks ass in FE12. Like, well, I guess I guess Gordon doesn't really. Gordon and Ryan don't really suck ass, but um, they're not. They're, they're definitely not good. Gordon and Ryan are definitely not good. Um. I love using those guys. Also, like the like the Scrub Squad from um, I forget where they're from. Uh, like the like the Medea Squad and whatnot. I don't I, I don't in FE12 that is I, in FE11. Fuck those guys. But uh, yeah, no, I I don't mind using those guys. It's, it's kind of fun. Um, number three, what would you want the next Fire Emblem game to be like? I want the next Fire Emblem game to be either a Tellus remake or. Um, I want them to pick one. I want them to make one story and realize, decide that because not only is are they bad at making multifaceted stories, I also think that you know it's gotten a little bit old at this point. And so you know, I think making one focused narrative would be for the best to keep things fresh. Um, yeah. Uh, Gira asks, 
Number one, which Pokemon is actually your favorite? I've answered this question three times now, so I have to look for my number four favorite. Okay, Arcanine, I'm sorry, Chief. I'm looking at my old list, and this, this Arcanine has been booted off of this list a long time ago. Um, I, need to, I need to change my favorites up a little bit. Uh, uh, Breloom needs to be moved down. Luxray needs to get the fuck off the list. Uh, oh, we're, uh, I need to make space for Zerkitry. Uh, you know what? Jolteon's moving down. Zerkitry is moving up. Uh, Scizor can go. It's going to be replaced by Heracross. Uh, and then Zerkitry, and then go here. Okay, I, I think my, my my fourth favorite Pokemon is... It's, this is actually a bit of a recent pick, but uh, Flygon. And... Uh, I just had a lot of fun using Flygon. I, I was I was in a fucking pickle when I was when I started getting out uh, started getting on the Gen 8 uh, Monotype ladder because I just didn't have um, I just didn't have answers to common mods. Like I got I got put in a pack by Slowbro. I got put in a pack by Curum. Holy shit! I got put in a pack by Curum, and I also got put in a pack by Ferrothorn. Well, not really put in a pack. But also, it was it, it was it was not it was not a fun time against Ferrothorn. I'll put it that much. I, I don't think anybody has a fun time fun time against Ferrothorn. Um. So and and then I discovered Specs Flygon with with like a flamethrower, Earth Power, Draco Meteor, U Turn. Um. Actually, uh, not Earth Power, Giga Drain. Uh. And this thing, this thing, it it, it you lead a, you lead if you're up against Mono Dragon, you lead it. And if they lead something faster, you just let it die because it's better than getting lead six would by Curum, uh, by, by getting lead six would by Specs Curum. And then if, if you're uh, and then if you're up against you know like a slow bro, then you can like pivot it in and get get some good damage on it with Giga Drain. It's a two hit KO usually. And then on and then against a Ferrothorn, uh, the flamethrower usually kills. You can also run like Superpower and Mamoswine, but it's not a it's always it's a two hit KO and also you take mad damage from Recoil and then also uh, they get Leech Seed on you, so it, it, it's just not a great time. Um, yeah. And what are your favorite corn quest builds? Definitely not uh, plus defense general in birthright with seal rest. That's definitely not one of my favorite corn quest builds. What is one of my favorite corn quest builds is um, um, is is just especially in birthright, just running a really like mid mid speed sword units are really good in birthright because you have access to practice katana. Um, and really, like any good bow unit is going to get uh, a, is going to get an A OK from me in any corn quest. Um, moving on to Lime Chips, how to comment on YouTube. Wait, what? You know what? I don't even know how to answer that question or the ramifications of the question, so I'm just going to move on. Uh, Scrapyard Dragon uh, asks, purely by design and personality, which Fates girl would you S support IRL? Um, okay, first of all, if Mikoto's not dead, that's the, that's the pick. Uh, and then after that, I don't know, bro. I might ironically have to just pass. No, that's, that's a joke. There's, um, I have no fucking idea. I, I think I'm gonna say like, I, I'm gonna say either like, I'm gonna say either Reyna or Felicia, one of those two. Um, but definitely Makoto if she's not dead. Um, that's definitely the number one pick. Um, wish on Pleiades, Pleiade, I don't really know how to say that, asks, are the killer weapons and fates any good? Uh, not really. They're not bad, but uh, they cost quite a bit uh, in order for you to be willing to call them good. The only killer weapons I would say in Fates are like worth trying are Killer Axe and Killer Bow. Um, killer Axe on Berserkers, obviously, and Killer Bow on Snipers. Um, the Axe less so, the Bow more so, mostly because Snipers um, can't really one round uh, Conquest Generals. For example, Niles. I, I have the killer bow on him now because it means that he's going to be able to, um, if he gets a little lucky, he can one round, he can uh, one hit KO a general with a crit, uh, which is something that he just wouldn't be able to do otherwise, which is awesome. Um, yeah, uh, I think that's what the killer weapons, I think that's the ki good killer weapons. Okay, I actually missed one here. Key uh, and Lux asks, do you think the new Fire Emblem uh, game leaks are real? Bro, if you're talking about the fucking toothpaste girl, that shit is... Honestly, I I almost wish it was real. Keyword almost. Because that would be the goofiest shit ever. Because everybody was clowning on that toothpaste girl for so long. Um, deservedly, because that shit looks like ass. Um, I, 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 but honestly, I, I think I still lean towards hoping that it's not real rather than kind of hoping that it's, it is real. Um, okay, back on track now. Uh, we're almost at the top here. Ultimate Dragon 24 asks, 
what made you start doing YouTube videos? Um, I just, so, you know, I fell in love with Fates a couple years ago at this point, but I, I, I just thought that it was like basically criminal that such a deep and well thought out mechanically game was relegated to basically niche status in the greater Fire Emblem community. Um, because it was not, because I guess maybe par partially because it's harder to emulate, but also I think because people need to shut the fuck up about Skill Emblem and, and learn how to read. Um, then again, I shouldn't be speaking because I played Cypher for a while and I was, and I always for, and I always misread stuff. So I guess I'm not the right guy to talk to. Um, and I was like, you know what? I think there's more of a market to make more Fates content. And then I decided to make, and also I wanted to show off some fun, little, fun strategies like, like, uh, and, and also, and also, also there's like propaganda. So I wanted to push the Perry propaganda, obviously. And then I also wanted to push male Corin supremacy propaganda. Um, so, you know, and, and Fates and doing videos is a really easy way to do that. <laughs> what a stupid way to answer the question. Um, in case it's not clear, I was mostly joking there. Um, who's my favorite character in all of Fire Emblem? Mm. This is a good question. Um, I'd say either like Camus, and I'm not talking about like Camus Camus, I'm talking about his like entire story arc from like the, the, through the first three games. Uh, either Camus or it would be um, I think it would either be like some somebody from somebody from Thracia, either like Finn or Leaf. Um, I can't really think of anybody that's as great of a character as those guys in that's in like um, that's in the uh, Telia saga because a lot of those units are a lot of those characters are just pretty good but not like exceptional. So yeah, I guess I would I I guess uh, my answer to that question is um, uh, Camus. Uh, what other game series do you like? I, I said, as I said, uh, Metroid, but uh, like I guess that's just Metroidvanias in general because I'm a pretty big fan. I, I enjoy Metroidvanias as long as it's like um, relatively simple to um, navigate because I suck at navigation. Uh, what other ga game series do I like? Um, I mean, I can't. I, I don't really want to say Zelda because the only Zelda games I like are um, Link to the Past and Breath of the Wild. Well, the only Zelda games I love... Okay, that's that's a lie, because I also like uh, Twilight Princess. But, yeah, no, it's Link to the Past, Breath of the Wild, Twilight Princess. I don't know if that counts as me, like, being a fan of the series. Um, so I don't really want to say that. Uh, Metroid, I already said that, because I'm, I am a fan of Metroid. Um, what, is this, what is a series that I'm a fan of? I'm definitely not saying Xenoblade, because I'm a certified Xenoblade 2 non-believer. Um... Xenoblade Chronicles, to be specific. Um, this is a really tough question. Well, I guess I'll I guess I'll just say like the like the, the When They Cry series because I I've done I've gone through all of Higurashi and all of Umineko and I like them both. But um, something I guess I could also say is that uh, I'm a bit I'm a yeah oh yeah Danganronpa fan and like Persona Four Five I, I played like the modern Persona games. Honestly, I'm really only just a big Persona Four fan. Um, Persona 5, I think it, I think it's alright, but I, I still prefer Persona 4. Um, yeah. And, um, alright, we're at the second to the last one now. Uh, Firmament 1 asks, 1. Do you read any comics that aren't manga? If not, do you want recommendations? Well, it depends on what your uh, definition of manga is. You're talking about, like, if you count, like, the like Korean, Korean webcomics as manga as well, then, uh, then... I don't really, not anymore, that is. I don't really read too much, like, like um, American stuff or, or, you know, like, Western stuff. Uh, but, you know, like, when I, was, like, when I was younger, I used to read, like, Bone and shit. That shit made me, that shit scared me as a kid, dude. Bone? Like, the monsters in Bone are pretty, pretty terrifying, all things considered. Um, oh, this is not good. Uh, why am I dealing less damage? Oh, because he's not at full HP. That's not good, that's not good. Um, do I have anything else that can deal more damage? I doubt it. If I could like... I'm not taking that. Um, I 
you know what, let's just go ahead and take care of these guys for a little bit longer. Maybe I'll get two strength levels down there. <laughs> oh man, I think I'm gonna have to give up on my dreams of this. Um, the issue is that these guys have vengeance? So skill times 1.5 right now is a 30% chance that Xander fucking dies. And that's just not so, not a chance I want to take. Actually, you know what I could do? I could kill all these massive rock guys and then chip with Percy at two range and then and then finish the boss off. Um, anyways, um, I yeah, I don't really. Um, I'm not really looking for recommendations. Not necessarily because I think your taste is bad, but because right now I'm reading like, oh god, oh my god, I'm so fucking bad. Oh my god, I'm so also lucky. Okay, hold up. We gotta watch this fucking enemy phase. This I made this thing this way too dicey. Why do they sound like it's like a train tracks or something? Okay, we're good, we're good, we're good. Okay, um You know what? I'm just gonna equip this axe. You might call it taint, it's just me making sure that I don't get my ass get myself killed okay so I guess it could be considered tame. but yeah no mostly because I, I, the reason that I'm not really looking for recommendations is because I there's like I don't know like like a total of 25 concurrent series that I'm reading right now so um as they're like releasing weekly or monthly or bi-weekly so I just I just can't be bothered keeping track of more stuff um number two what units from birthright would you love to be able to use in conquest um, I think really, like, on, like, uh, well, I guess there's only, like, one archer archer. Uh, I, I would say Reyna, or Setsuna, um, or, like, like, what's a unit that would be fun to use in Conquest? Um, not Tsubaki, I can tell you that much for sure. Uh, I'm trying to think, I can't really think of many units that would be that fun to use uh, from Birthright in Conquest. Mm, you know what? No, actually, well, yeah, no, Azama would not work in, in Conquest. Uh, Scarlet would work in Conquest, actually. Uh, yeah, I think it would have to be uh, either, it would have to be, or maybe like Subaki, just because I could get uh, Kaldori, and Kaldori would be mad fun to use. Um, I'm going to go ahead and chip this guy with Xander so that Percy can take the kill. Um... Yeah, I think that's my answer. Okay, now this cool dude named Lagspike776 left a comment uh, asking a couple of questions here. Number one, what's your favorite JoJo OPs? All right, um, definitely not biased question here. Uh, the best JoJo OP is Bloody Stream, and if you've got a problem with that, you can actually fuck off. Well, not really, but like, like you know, it's a difference of opinion. It's gonna exist. Like, I, I, ge I just genuinely think that Bloody Stream is the best. Number two is Chase, and people talking trash about Chase, or even saying, like, like, when people are like, oh, I don't know, people say that this opening is really not, not not that good, but it's fine. Like, it's not fine. It's way better than fine. Chase is like, Chase is, it, it knows what it's doing, and it shows up, does the job, and it's done. That's, it's, it's clear, concise, and people say that it doesn't fit the tone of Diamond is Unbreakable. You're crazy. They're, they're hunting for a serial killer that's, a uh, serial killer in the town of Morio that's never been caught and can vaporize people. Like what? What are you talking about? Of course, it uh, it definitely it's it's great days that doesn't fit the uh, uh, diamonds unbreakable uh, like the the at least the before they do the bites of dust stuff. It's great days that doesn't fit diamonds unbreakable. Um, number three, I would say uh, it's either crazy noisy bizarre town or stand proud. Actually, it's stand proud for sure. Um, I definitely like the, the the feel of Stand Proud a bit more than Crazy Noisy Bizarre Town, even though Crazy Noisy Bizarre Town is, is a great song. Um, uh, here's another extremely non-biased uh, question here. Top 10 favorite manga right now. All right, let me pull up the list. I have this, I also have this shit written down just, just because I know I'm going to forget it. Okay, uh, number one, Assassination Classroom. I mean, I, I've been I've been saying this for a long time. It's my favorite. I, it it got to me at a perfect time in my life, so that's part of why I like it so much. Number two, Tokyo Ghoul Re. Uh, I, I I don't think original Tokyo Ghoul is bad, but I just think the Re is way better, and it still pisses me off that they ruined it in the adaptation. Number three, Steel Ball Run. Holy shit, dude! Part seven, 
Dude, one day part seven is gonna get animated and it's gonna be fire. Number four, Kaguya Sama. It might you might say that it's a bit um, a bit preemptive to put this on my top ten, but not only is it uh, do I like it a lot. Also, we're like eight chapters away from the from it being over, so it, it's actually not that preemptive at all. Number five is um, Pokemon Adventures. If you haven't read Pokemon Adventures, you're doing and you're and you are a Pokemon enjoyer. You are doing yourself a massive disservice. Uh, number five is uh, oh fuck I gotta I gotta reword this. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Uh, here we go. Okay, I gotta I gotta make some space for future diary. Um, you know what? We're doing top eleven because I can't decide between the last spot. Okay, number five is Umineko, specifically uh, episode six. If I had to pick one specific episode, uh, episode six is my favorite. Um, uh, and then uh, because it's just. Go well, it's mad spoilers, so I can't really get too much into it. But uh, episode 6 is definitely my favorite of the uh, Umineko manga uh, episodes. Um, after that, it's... Um, number 7 is A Silent Voice. I even own the whole box set. It's like right behind me right now. Um, it's a fucking great story. Um, number 8 is um, Three Days of Happiness. If you haven't read it, then there's actually... And you're like... Uh, you you're willing to read manga then there's actually no reason for you not to it's 15 chapters long and it's it's so it hits different it just hits different it another cr uh, another like crime is that this hasn't gotten any sort of adaptation yet like a, a movie for three days of happiness would actually tear up the box office i'm telling you um uh number nine well it's i don't know about necessarily about number nine but it's like around there uh is uh full metal alchemist Actually, you know what? I'm gonna move Full Metal Alchemist up to above Silent Voice. Um, move Umineko right below it. Move Pokemon Adventures to below. So now it's actually Assassination Classroom, Tokyo Ghoul, Steel Ball Run, Kaguya Sama, Full Metal Alchemist, Umineko, Sil a Silent Voice, Pokemon Adventures, and then uh, Th Three Days of Happiness gets moved up. Um, sorry, Umineko, Three Days of Happiness, Silent Voice, then Pokemon Adventures. And, um,. The reason Full Metal Alchemist is in the top is, I mean, if you know, you know, it's it's just, it's, do not, and do, do not go in there. Okay, um, the reason it's good is because it's fucking good, it's, it's a well-made plot. Um, um, yeah, it's good. Uh, and then, number 10 is either Monster or, uh, Future Diary. Uh, number 10, uh, I mean, Monster is, a, if you don't know, it's like a, it's like a psychological thriller about this surgeon who saves the life of this kid who grows up to be a serial killer and he's got like he's like trying to track the ser the kid down so he can stop it and it's there's so many insanely compelling characters and it culminates in an excellent scene in this village i i really like monster i could not put it down it's 162 chapters i finished in a full in one setting um future diary a lot of people say it's ass and i'm kind of agree but i still think that i like it more I like it more than a lot of other manga. I, when I first read Future Diary, I was like, this is this is the GOAT. And when I come back, I realized that this had a lot of issues, but I still think it's absolutely, like, it's really compelling to me to read. Because, I, again, it's another one of those things where I just couldn't put it down. Um, and I feel like that has to account for something. And yeah, so that's my top 10. And the last question is, what is something you've done recently that you want to talk about? Why did I put this question in? I, I, I don't know what I'm, something I've done recently that I want to talk about is. Um, you know what, we're just gonna pretend like that question doesn't exist. Um, also the reason we're struggling so much to kill this boss is because it's, the boss is an arm scroll and I really want that. Um, do not escape, please. Okay, I'm gonna turn off animations now because all the Q&A is done, so I don't have to suffer through this anymore. Okay, I guess I'll I guess I'll start using the uh, iron axe then. Okay, you know what? Actually, I guess I could go back to the question that I uh, about like things that I've done recently. Um, I've like I literally started collecting manga. Like I don't know, like I, I like got most of my stuff from like libraries. Um, until recently, and when I say recently, I mean like, I don't know, like two, three months ago, and I already have a pretty fucking big collection. I have the first five volumes of the Pokemon Adventures, 
uh, collector's edition. I have all of Battle Tendency, uh, jo JoJo's Battle Tendency. I have like, I have, I, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven out of the nine three-in-one Full Metal Alchemist volumes. I have um, five, uh, six out of the seven um, Attack on Titan uh, Colossal Edition volumes, and uh, I'm. Hold up, 35, 36, okay. Um, I think Kumagira, again, has lower strength. Yeah, um... This is... Actually, I'm stupid, and I can just give this axe over to Xander, and he's gonna get the kill. Hold up, let me just go ahead and rally defense one more time. Spend one more enemy phase here. Lunge. Forty-four. Huh? Lunge this dude. Get in. Get over there. Boom. Okay, there we go. Now we can kill this dude. And Arthur does have 44 defense, right? Okay. I mean, Percy. Uh, there we go. Holy shit. Oh, wow. Another level up for Xander. Level 12. Yeah, it's pretty over leveled. <laughs> We're going to be taking advantage of this for basically the entirety of Hoshido. Whew. Okay. That was one hell of a clear. LTC, by the way. Uh, no. <laughs> um... You know what? Might as well give the last kill to Corrin. Ooh, strength, you love to see it. Okay, level nine, Blade Knight Corrin. And that is going to be... Oh, I forgot, you gotta... Oh God. Can I be honest with you? I'm just gonna pretend like I didn't, I didn't choke on balls and I'm, I just beat the map and I'm just gonna fucking, because I'm on casual mode, I'm just gonna act like none of that ever happened. All right, um, so yeah, that was, that was, that was uh, chapter 21 somehow thrown away in 53 turns. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed. This has been an extremely long recording, but I mean, it's for the Q and A, so I'm happy that it happened. Um, uh, if you guys enjoyed, please leave a like, subscribe if you wanna see more. Um, Hit the, we all know what the bell does by now. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.